All right, now E. coli, uh, we now recognize at least, what, five types of E. coli that causes problems. Actually, the first one is not a problem, the non-pathogenic E. coli that's uh, within the GI tract. Now, if you take those and infect a, a soft tissue, yes, they are pathogens, but within the GI tract, they're not. And then we have the, the other four types, the enterotoxigenic, enteropathogenic, enteroinvasive, and the one that gets the most press is the enterohemorrhagic, which is uh, E. coli 0157H7. That's one of the one that's been associated so much with food poisoning and uh, high fatality rates in humans. Uh, <coughs> probably the most common in, in uh, calves is uh, the enterotoxigenic. It's generally a non-invasive uh, enteritis, so it doesn't actually invade the intestinal lining. Instead, it causes a biochemical lesion. And no, you don't have to draw this out. Uh, this is just something I produced uh, a long time ago uh, for CE to show how it works. The point is it, it uh, creates a secretory diarrhea, a hypersecretory diarrhea. Uh, without any actual intestinal lesions. So the biggest thing with most, and, and this is what is commonly referred to as scours. So E. coli enteritis, cholebacillosis, scours are all pretty much the same synonyms there. But the biggest thing in calves is fluid therapy. Again, there's not an actual physical lesion. Uh, we're letting it run its course, and in the meantime, we're preventing the dehydration and electrolyte disturbances that occur. <coughs> uh, so in that oral, electrolytes are a big, big part of uh, enterotoxigenic treatment. We're, giving, we're taking them off milk replacer uh, and putting them on just oral electrolytes to uh, address dehydration and electrolyte abnormalities. We only use antibiotics if they're septicemic, uh, or we can't do the uh, oral electrolyte solution. Um, that's more common. We see the oral uh, antibiotics used more commonly in piglets because it's harder to uh, do uh, oral electrolytes in them. But in the baby calves, uh, you just switch them to um, a uh, oral electrolyte solution. So the enteropathogenic uh, is somewhat invasive and causes an inflammatory response uh, <coughs> and uh, causes diarrhea. I won't go into that. Um, the enterohemorrhagic, again, is the one that gets the most press. It's moderately invasive, but it causes a pretty severe bloody uh, diarrhea but no fever. And it's the toxins here that, again, are thought to be involved. Oftentimes, they cause kidney damage or overt kidney failure. There's also been vasculitis associated with it, where humans will slough toes and fingers and this sort of thing associated with it. So it's a pretty aggressive thing. Uh, their antibiotics uh, will play a role, and a variety of things against E. coli would be effective. Uh, so basically, uh, e. coli, salmonella, I haven't mentioned, but the same things apply. So symptomatic therapy, mainly oral electrolytes. Treat the, uh, the infection as a secondary consideration, uh, staying within the GI tract, spectinomycin if you can get it, or uh, oral neomycin, again, both uh, staying within the intestine. Systemically, if you think they're septicemic or you have an invasive tissue form, then uh, fluoramphenicol, if it's not a violation, fluoroquinolone. Uh, and therein lies the hard part because uh, they also happen to have a pneumonia if you want to treat them with a fluoroquinolone technically. Safety of fear would be a good choice from the septicemic standpoint. It'll get both the uh, E. coli and probably a pretty decent chance of getting the systemic salmonella. And again, we can use it extra labelly provided we stay on dose. We can use extra label indications. We just can't change the way we use it in terms of dose frequency, uh, withdrawals, that sort of thing. So probably uh, of those, uh, ceftiofur would be very common and fluorophenicol second.